of you have studied about the statistics and you have the basic idea about probability. So here what I am going to do, how statistics and probability are related with the way of life. Okay? So let me write some few sentences and then that we will analyze with the basic definition of probability. For example, statistics. Of course, you have several definitions in the book of statistics. The one is that statistics is the uh, method to collect data, go for the presentation, analysis, and interpretation. But here, I am going to give you the different definition, and that is in real life useful. First, uh, <coughs> it is a reasoning. with numbers. Statistics is a reasoning with numbers. And that's what we are doing. Whether you have a studies about measures of central tendency, measures of dispersion, askewness, kurtosis, correlation, regression, time stage, whatever the topic, everywhere we are playing with the numbers. So it is a reasoning with numbers. Now, probability. Probability is a measure of uncertainty. Okay. It is a numerical measure of uncertainty. So see the basic difference. Statistics will always deal with the reasoning of numbers, probability will always deal with the uncertainty. So here, and if you ask you, then I am sure that everybody will agree that in this world, nothing is certain, everything is uncertain. So if everything is uncertain, and still we are striving to search something which will have some impact. Okay? So finally, by combining this, you can say that uh, probability is the only way to have regions in uncertainty. So probability will have region in uncertainty. Now the next point is a risky situation. I am quoting the word risky situation means a complete uncertain thing. A risky situation always has always have two elements. And what are that elements? Number one is the uncertainty of outcomes. Uncertainty of outcomes. <coughs> Second is desirability of outcomes. So see here, so, and if you analyze it properly in the real life situation, whenever you are facing any problem, there are always two possibilities. The one is uncertainty of the outcomes. You are not sure that what is going to happen, whether you are going to achieve it or not. Second is that you have the desire, wherever the situation is uncertain, you are not sure that what is going to happen, but still you have the desire to get something. Okay? So here, probability is always concerned with the making the balance between the, these two, uncertainties and desirability. Now uncertainties are measured by probability. Let me write this. 
uncertainty is R measured by probability and how we will measure the desirability desirability are measured by utility desirability are measured by utility So to measure uncertainty, to get something within uncertainty, we need probability. And within uncertainty, we have desirability, and desirabilities are measured by utility. Now here, utility is related with emotion. Because utility, the, the, uh, a particular thing which have utility for me, maybe that is not have utility for the others. Even a per person have a test for a particular item, the other person may be he or she has no test for that item. So utility is ultimately measured by emotions. Utility is related with emotion. Mathematical definition of probability. Uh, here, <coughs> let S be the sample space. Let S be the sample space of a random experiment. <coughs> Let NS be the number of points in the sample space quickly exhaustive and mutually exclusive let a be an event a subset of <coughs> is and n a be the number of points in a which are favorable and within sample space, we have one event. And that event is nothing but the subset, a part of the sample space. Then, probability of A denoted by PA is defined as P A to N A over N S. Number of points in A divided by number of points in S. And of course, what is the range of probability? 0 to 1. So probability of an event always lies between 0 and 1. If the probability 
if the event is impossible, then probability will be zero. If the event is 100% certain, then the probability is one. Now, if you look the definition of uh, this mathematical definition of probability, how many terms are there? The first term is sample space. Next, you have <coughs> random experiment. And after that, you have equally likely, exhaustive, mutually exclusive, and a term you have subset. And if you see carefully all the terms, which term is the main term here? Random experiment. First, we are deciding about the random experiment. And once you decide about the random experiment, that will give you sample space. And in the sample space, all the points are equally likely. Equally likely means that you cannot distinguish between the two points. You cannot say that this point is more favorable than this point. Okay? Exhaustive means complete possibility. There is no other way. Once you decide about the experiment, whatever the possible outcomes are there, that we call exhaustive. These are the only possibility. Beyond that, there is no possibility. And mutually exclusive. Mutually exclusive means that if a particular event is happening, the other event will not happen. Just like tossing a coin. If you toss a coin, then either you will get head or tail. Both you cannot get. Similarly, if you are appearing in the examination, either you will pass or you will fail. If there are only two criteria. Or if the grading system are there, then one of the five grades you will get. So getting a grade in the exemption is mutually exclusive. Is it possible that you will get B or C both? It is not possible. So mutually exclusive means two or more events cannot happen together. Okay. Now here, random experiment. So I am not going to write a definition of random experiment, just I would like to tell you. Random experiment is an experiment which have three important criteria. One is that all the outcomes of the experiment are known in advance. Before conducting the experiment, you know that these are the possible outcomes. Next is that the experiment is conducted in a similar environment, in the same condition. The experiment is repeated under identical condition. So if you are conducting an experiment in a similar condition or identical condition, you are repeating it in identical condition and you know the outcomes that what are the outcomes you are going to get and the third is that but you cannot get certainty about a particular event or you can say that none of the events can be predicted with certainty. So if an experiment is repeated under identical condition, all the outcomes are known in advance and the third is that none of the outcomes can be predicted with certainty, then that experiment is said to be a random experiment. Okay? Is it clear? And now event is nothing but it is coming from the sample space. It is a part of the sample space. Whatever the possible outcomes are there, from that you will get the event. And for that event, we are finding the probability. So you have to remember this way. First is random experiment it will generate sample space and from sample space we are getting event and for that event we want the probability okay now i will connect it with the real life situation my objective is that one to just in a sort i want to brief you just a the moment you start thinking about something, which that way, what you will generate? Mind. Of course, sometime you might have heard that people will say that, oh, today my mind is not good. But do you agree with that statement? That is not correct. Mind is good or bad, it depends upon the level of thinking that you are entertaining. So if you, since the morning the, uh, you get up and if you start thinking something bad, then what you are generating the bad web and with that your mind is getting corrupted. And if the mind is getting corrupted, what will be the outcome? 
and from this mind so we are getting the outcome the results so in real life situation everybody have this thinking ability and everybody can think whatever he or she wants to do accordingly your mind will be constructed mind is full of thought and thought you are creating by thinking and whatever your situation present situation is there whether you are healthy or whether you are unhealthy whether you are rich or you are poor it is not the uh, effect of the outside world it is the effect of the inside world and that ha has been generated by the thinking level so here i would like to summarize you that thinking is the most powerful force and it is the most powerful magnet in the world with your right thinking with your right attitude you can attract whatever you like in your life now the question is that how to channelize it and i have a survey through the interaction with the students in different university in here in your country also and i have observed that if you ask honestly the people that what do you want in your life majority they don't know some they want that okay i got uh, i want good job somebody will say that no i want a good house i want uh, uh, to be a rich i want to be this one but i want to be is uncertain unless you visualize it unless you imagine it so here keeping now my uh, uh, suggestion to all of you that please focus on the outcome focus on the result what result do you want and accordingly you channelize your thinking it is a reverse way it is not that you have to first start thinking simply no what you want you what you want you decide that and then you channelize your all energy all your thinking process keeping in mind the result let me here summarize please note down that a few sentences because this pen is not working properly uh, first statement please write it uh, i am open and receptive to i am open and receptive to all the good and abundance of this creation i am open and receptive to all the good and abundance of this creation second is i am open and receptive to all the good and abundance of this creation second is okay second is i love respect and approve of myself i love respect and approve of myself exactly as i am exactly as i am third point day by day comma in every way comma i am getting better and better younger and younger day by day in every way i am getting better and better younger and younger next next point i am whole w h o l e i am whole perfect strong powerful loving harmonious and happy <coughs> the last point <coughs> i am more than i appear to be i am more than i appear to be all the worlds strength and power all the world's strength and power rests inside me all the 
all the world's strength and power rests inside me. So total is five points. Okay? So here what I would like to say that first thing you have to decide what do you want and these five sentences I gave you for two reasons. The one reason is that if you see in this world then majority of the people are suffering from two problems either inferiority complex or superiority complex. And that is happening if you are not happy from inside then you have these two problems. So to overcome that, that you have that sentence that I love, respect and approve of myself exactly as I am. Because if you don't love yourself, you cannot love others. If you are not happy from inside, you cannot make others happy. So first you should love, respect and approve of yourself exactly as you are. Sometimes people may have a, a problem with uh, their complex and that, oh, I am not good looking. Uh, somebody have that, no, I am very good looking. So both are dangerous. So to get rid of that problem, you have to repeat that one. And in, let me tell you, in a statistics, there is a very beautiful theorem, I don't know whether you know or not, central limit theorem, which says that if you repeat something from psychology point of view, if you repeat something 30 times a day, then after 30 days, your mind will become conditioned for that one. And then mind will activate in that direction and it will work as a magnet and accordingly it will bring the outcome for which your mind is conditioned for. That's why you have to think about the outcomes and accordingly you channelize your thoughts. If you ask me honestly that in this world somebody is uh, getting day by day richer and on the other side the people are getting poorer and poorer. What is the reason behind that? Simple reason. Those who are getting rich, richer and richer day by day, they are thinking and focusing on becoming richness, becoming rich. Those who are day by day getting poorer, they are always thinking and focusing on how to get poor. Because they will always repeat, no, I cannot afford this, I am a poor. I have no capacity. So you yourself are criticizing yourself, then how you will get the desired result? That is not possible. That why, that's why the Albert Einstein, he said that imagination and visualization are the two powerful forces. How much you have the visualizing capacity or imagining capacity in that proportion you will get. Like uh, Dr. Fitzu, my colleague, he was just jokingly telling you that uh, uh, how to uh, get a good wife and good husband. So if you ask me honestly, that is possible. Because the everything is inside you. What you have to do? You have to put a spark. You have to channelize your thought. Channelize, let me tell you uh, how to channelize this one. You have to imagine what you want, you have to imagine that you have and your behavior should be tuned or aligned with having the items. For example, if I want something, so I want something, there is a reason behind that. There is an emotion, emotional attachment with that item. So you have to imagine and you have to behave in such a way that you got it. And then with the passage of time, you will get. There is no doubt. But how consistently you are imagining and visualizing in that proportion it will come. So here the final, let me summarize all these things that probability and statistics are the ways of life. It is not the subject like mathematics or other things. Of course it has mathematical background but it is more related with way to life how to refine your thoughts, how to channelize your thoughts, how to uh, focus what you want. Just in this way. Sometime, you know, if you get time, you have to do in this way. The morning you are getting up, just you sit silently on a chair or a bed, wherever, and observe that what thought is coming to your mind. Check that whether that thought is related with your outcome. Then let the thought to continue. But if your thought is not related with the outcome you want, 
immediately you have to change the thought. Just like that, if you are watching the BBC and you don't like and you want to see Al Jazeera or some other channel, what you will do? You will take a remote, you will change the frequency. In the same way that each thought has its own frequency. Your job is that always keep the remote in your hand. Remote means the thinking, you have to control your thinking. And change always, whenever you frequency changes, you change the frequency on the outcome, what outcome you want. And the final, you know, uh, as all of you are studying, some of you may be good, some of you are not good, but here I would like to focus and tell you that nobody is inferior in this, this world. Everybody has the capability. But to get that one, just you write five more sentences or very few things. Just you please note down. Third is, the God is always within me and He is taking care of everything. The God is always within me and He is taking care of everything. Fourth point is, I am the winner, I am the winner, I am the winner in all my endeavors. Today is the best and happiest day in my life. Today is the best and happiest day in my life. So the morning, this the five sentences at the morning you get up, Without leaving your bed, just you remember these five sentences. Within you, you have to channelize it. Okay? So do it, and I am sure that it will have impact. And I will come another day, I will explain you some more. Okay? Do you have any question, any query? If you have any doubt, I can give you some few minutes to 